What's up, hey, man? What's going on, man? How are you? Doing good. How you doing? Doing real good, man. Doing good. Good to see you. You too. Thanks for switching around days with me. No worries. No worries. <laughs> what are you switching mm. up the show? Yeah. Yeah. Uh wanted to switch to Thursday because Wednesday we're we've moved to a uh, a member hosted event on at noon. So where normally I was doing a and a you'd come on, we'd talk for a few minutes, and then I'd answer yeah. some questions for people in the group, what have you. Uh, now, a member of the group is leading a role play that day, and they're working with each other. I think that's really cool. <laughs> it's How did it work out? Good. Oh, my God. It was wow. amazing. Yeah. How'd you like, come up with that? Like, in a lot of ways, it was better than when I do it. <laughs> you're fired uh, yeah you're fired. <laughs> yeah it's great um well i i don't know i i stay up really 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 late <laughs> <laughs> and i sit there by myself and i just think <laughs> <laughs> that's the only idea uh that's the only idea machine i, I can come up with man <laughs> and i guess i was sitting on the couch and it just dawned on me oh, why don't we have uh well, Gary V said, he said, uh, if you, if you let your, your community get more involved in the community, then your community will grow. And I was like, Hmm, how can we, how can we really, really show that the community is involved? And the idea was like, Oh, what if we have a community led role play? That's what's up. Cool. <laughs> Sorry to sorry to get up, but it was awesome, man. I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, it was great. So uh, you uh, you got a short sale lead from somebody in the in the VIP club here, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure if he's in the VIP because he got he um met me through you for sure. Nate Nate Wilson is he in the VIP? Nate, yeah, yeah, Nate awesome. Nate Williams Wilson, yeah, Nathaniel, Wilson. but I call him Nate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's here in the VIP. I think he's brand new with us. I think yeah. he started yeah, this Yeah, week. that's awesome, man. Yeah, he um yeah. I guess he's in the New Orleans market and yeah, he um got me something out there and we're we're working it. It's pretty cool. Boom. Boom. See man. That, that's how easy it is. Uh, did yeah. he did he mention to you how by chance how he came across the lead or or do you remember any of the details? Just kind of show us what what it was and how it works. So so yeah. maybe, maybe more will follow in his footsteps. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was super simple. He just literally filled out the form, you know, just like, you know, just like he's supposed to, I got notified, shot him a contract and really that's it. You know, I sent them a referral agreement and reached out to the lead. You know, she wants to try a short sale and boom, it's that easy. Really? That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the background of it as far as like how he, you know, what he did to get the lead and stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, man. That's, that's cool. That's so you talk to the lead and, and uh, she's like, yeah. And so you're off to the races on that, huh? That's it. That's it. I just made man. sure, you know, it's yeah. Make that's sure it's a, the right life decision for her. That's all, you know, cause that stuff's important. So yeah, it sounds really, really easy. Yeah. I mean, he could tell you more. Maybe he'll, he'll, he'll come on here and be like, Bob's an ass. He's tough to deal with. I mean, I think <laughs> really, really, you know, <laughs> uh, I, maybe he'll have something different to say, but I doubt he'll say that. Uh, <laughs> I doubt he'll say that. Man. I don't yeah. think anybody says that, man. Well, we all yeah. got a hater or two out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But I doubt it's him. <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's cool though i was happy to see that because like you know people from the group are like getting the value and they're getting value from it yeah. so i was really high, you know i was really pumped i wish everybody that joined the vip went over and logged in with you and got got their name on the roster because <laughs> i'm telling you when, when you run across one of these you'll remember that you have this relationship with bob and you'll oh okay hold on let me turn this over to Bob and let Bob make the money for you. Okay. If you don't, then you, maybe you forget or you'll think, Oh, well, I'd have to go do it now. And then you don't do it and you miss out on 500 bucks <laughs> Yeah. or, or, or you forget how to, 
<laughs> yeah yeah and really it's yeah. just filling out a form that's all it is yeah like, you know Where, where's yeah. the form at where we get the form from my website universal short sales.com all right yeah and what we got to do just if it's a short sale we got to do any kind of research or just short sales send it to you that's it. I mean, definitely talk to the seller first, you know, cause I don't want to like rear end anybody and like, yep. you know, catch them off guard, but yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, that's it. If you think it might be a short sale, that's it. You could just link me up with the seller and you know, I'll just keep you updated. I'll let you know what happens step by okay. step. That's it. that's it. Man, that's easy. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, uh, man, lots of cool stuff going on around here. This is kind of new y'all. Um, we haven't been doing this forever and this is a cool this is a cool outlet for you when you run across these deals and then uh michael batista over at automated rei he just launched a bunch of new stuff yeah like there's just a lot of crazy i feel like i'm getting left behind like i need to come up with something new i'm like what what do i do what do i do you just did come up with something new <laughs> letting everybody talk to each other i've i've oh, yeah. you know, never i mean i don't know maybe other wholesale platforms are doing that but i've never seen it well, know. dude, these some of these students are just getting so good. You know what I mean? It's just like uh, there's no reason for them to not have, uh, you know, some ownership here and and really share because people get this shit when they hear it from more than just me. So, like, uh, that's why I like having you on every week, man. Because you know, if I if I just sat here and told people about it, no. yeah. They get to look at you, they get to see you, and they get to know, hey, man, this guy's a pretty cool guy. Justin likes him. Uh, you know, somebody else is already putting a deal in through. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, everybody should be. Everybody should be signed up over there. Go jump on there, guys. I wish everybody in the VIP club was on in there. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then if um, anyone wants an ebook too, which I wrote because Justin gave me the idea and it's, and it's a, you know, it just explains everything. It's six pages, super easy read. Um, there's another form on my website. It's not the wholesaler lead form. It's, it's um, like a wholesaler slash investor contact form. Um, fill that out and I'll send you uh, the ebook right over. It kind of breaks everything down, you know, of like what kind of, you know, deals make sense as short sales that you guys can't work, you know, and it just gives you all yeah. the info. So yeah, um, all of it's free. Obviously I don't charge for any of this stuff. And actually that booklet will tell you kind of what you need to say when you're, when you're on the phone with a homeowner and you realize that this is the scenario for them. Yeah. Uh, it kind of gives you the, the ammunition in your gun, you know, like you, you kind of know what you're talking about now a little bit, at least enough to, to start transitioning it over to, Hey, I'm going to refer this over to, to, to my partner, Bob. And, yep. uh, you know, and Bob will call you blah, blah, you know, and then they might have some questions and, you know, uh, uh, what do you say? Well, it's, it's in the booklet. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. my point. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing too. If you guys are ever talking to somebody, that's a good point. Don't ever feel like you have to be like a short sale expert and know all the answers. You could just say, Hey, look, this isn't my expertise, but I work with someone. It's all he does is short sales and he could answer any questions you have. So yeah, you know, it's super easy. Yeah. When you do so many over the course of a year, you know, that's a lot of additional income off of dead leads stuff that you're not, you know, you're not making any money on them. You're just passing up on them. So exactly. Exactly. All right, Bob. Love you. Thanks for being here, man. I appreciate Love it. being here, man. This is awesome. This is a great group you have. It really is. Can, it's I, awesome. can I ask you a question for Bob before he go? Yeah. 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 And, and I talked to you a, a while back. And I remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. About those forbearance. Yeah. Um, I've heard a couple of scenarios. I don't know. Uh, you know, they said they, some banks will request the, the payments all at once. And I've heard another scenario where they said they'll have an extension and they might throw the those payments at the end of the loan. So I don't know which is which now. They're going to put them. So most of them are going to be ballooned at the end of the loan. Once the once the loan um, matures, that's when people are going to have to pay these. Now, maybe there's some that are structured a different way. I just don't know of any. I mean, I'm not a, you know, a flow bone uh, forbearance expert. 
but most of them you're just going to have to pay it at the end of the balloon. So it's just adding to that, you know, that mortgage balance. But but then I'm going to ask anybody like, let's say in in a month or so when they when the forbearance is over, then I'm going to ask because most people probably will not have the money anyway. No. So I mean, that's going to no. create a crisis. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, that'd be crazy. That'd be almost criminal. Then I mean, maybe some crazy lenders in like the middle of nowhere will do that. But like the government loans, which the vast majority of these forbearances, they're like FHA stuff, you know, um, VAs, they're all going to mature at the end, like the end of the loan, not when the forbearance is up. Someone just asked, will it affect the credit score with the forbearance mark? I actually learned that. I always thought it didn't and <clears throat> excuse me, someone, I forget who it was. Um, last time I was on here uh, said that it does take a hit on your credit. I honestly didn't know that. So uh, to answer the question in the group chat, yes, it does. Um, it does affect your credit doing a forbearance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Aisha told me then. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Somebody, Nathaniel Wilson, I think he just popped up here in the room, but he said, he? he said, yeah, Bob, all right with me. So, all right, cool. <laughs> I'll take it. It's it's great to see everybody here. Uh, Bob, thanks again, man. Yeah. Uh, unless anybody's got a question for Bob before, you know. All right, Bob, I'll see you next week, man. See you next week, guys. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Hey, hey, everybody. What a great crowd we got today. Um, Ricky and Ryan, uh, we also have Jessica, David, Tim, Ginger. Great to see you here, Ginger. I know you've been trying to figure out some of this technology stuff, and good, good that you're here. Glad to see you here. Uh, Aisha, good to see you here. Alex, Alex, it's good to see you, man. Glad you're here. And Nathaniel Wilson. Yeah, glad you're here too. And we got some people out here watching on the Facebook room as well. So um, anybody got any questions for me today? How's your business going? You guys working on lease options business? Yeah. That's, uh, I got a question. Yeah, okay. When you do all these texts, the ones you don't get no reply from, are they dead? Do you try to get, get in touch with them some other way or just keep, keep, keep moving? Well, let me ask you a question, man. Mm -hmm. When you say the ones you don't get a reply from, mm -hmm. are you getting an, an excessive amount of those? I haven't really done that many. Uh, I've just kind of sent some out yesterday. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm ready to blast off. That's why I'm asking. Okay. Two things. One is, with the political climate, with the pandemic, whatever climate, I don't know what the, <laughs> I'm not quite so eloquent, but um, yeah, with, with things that are the way they are, the, the, the carriers, phone carriers, Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile, there's the, the major mobile carriers, so they handle text messaging. They've tightened down the you know the ratchets here and and they're saying hey you know we're going to scrutinize things more closely when it comes to text spamming okay well unfortunately sometimes we fall into that category and when we fall into that category we find that we get a lot of no response okay mm -hmm. like a, a big huge amount so let's say for example you sent out um 500 texts and you only got, you know, 17 responses, 27 responses, total, total responses. All the others was like, nobody replied at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not, that's not your message sucked and nobody wanted to talk to you. That is the carrier designated you as spam and clipped your message off. And it didn't even get to the recipients. See, that happened to me the very first time I didn't get no responses, yeah. but, uh, that was strange because it's my first time. That's, that was maybe that's the way it yeah. goes. But. Well, I'm used to going because uh, I'm a bit old school, man. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm used to going on the machine, clicking up 500, putting my message in, sending out 500 at a time, and then having like a whole bunch of leads. 
I loved, yeah. I loved it that way. But what I'm relegated to now in order to stay compliant and in order to stay safe and also in order to, uh, you know, fly under the radar on some of these rules and, and policies, I guess is what they have. Uh, now, especially during this particular climate, I have to send out short bursts of messages. So maybe 50 or a hundred at a time. Right. Um, so that means I have to play with the filters more and do more scrapes. You, you follow me yeah. so that I get, I can break them down into smaller blasts. Right. And, uh, yes. Does it, is it a pain in the rumpus? Oh, yeah, more than it was a couple of years back when I could just pull, I could scrape the entire state of Missouri. I could blast 500 at a time, 586 or 600, whatever, whatever the number popped up to be. And no problem at all. I'd have, I'd just be overrun with it. Now those days are currently over. See, I'm nowhere near that. I, maybe 50 at a time for me. <laughs> okay. So, uh, that's, that's a great way to do it, man. Um, one, one other way that you could make this easier for you is to use the TCPA compliant module over there uh, okay. yep. where you, where you one click them that way, you know, you're not sending more than a certain amount at a certain, on a certain time and a certain day, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, if you end up having a big, big scrape for some reason and you want to just send, you know, the first right. hundred of them, <clears throat> um, but the no response is what do I do with them on a good, healthy scrape and blast where I have, let's say a hundred I've sent out. And out of that, I'll have maybe typically, I think it's somewhere around maybe even 30 or 40, sometimes 50, no replies. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. I don't do anything with those, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't get caught in the spam filter. Right, that's okay. kind of, that's a VIP exclusive. Um, I've had uh, I've had people hit me up and and say, hey, you know, they're not in the club, and they're like, what do I do? This is not working. Like you say, it's working, and it's not working. Like your some of your students on there say it's working, and I'm like, okay, well, how many did you send? I sent seven hundred. Okay you know what happened to them, right? They got nabbed by the carrier for spam because, right. because they sent 700 of the same identical message from the same number at the same time. <laughs> I think that defines what spam is. Right. Okay. So, so, yeah. I'd just be overwhelmed to do that many at one time. Cause when they text me back, I like to, you know, get back to them promptly not wait to the next day or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to send daily, like what's the ideal number, like break them down to fifties or hundreds or how do you break them down? Yeah. Yeah. If you did a hundred a day, that would be a good routine for you. Okay. You know, which is, this is why I don't understand y'all. And I'm not trying to sound scoldy or anything like I'm scolding somebody, but I don't understand when people tell me, that they are falling short on getting leads. And I'm just like, okay, I understand sometimes you don't necessarily get five people on the phone in a day, every day and have five decent conversations. Okay. Sometimes I get that. All right. Sometimes you get voicemails. Sometimes you have crappy days that, you know, sometimes, 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 yeah. sometimes sh shit happens. Right. Um, but the leads getting those leads, because literally all I'm asking you to do is go find a small town someplace, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> okay. A small town, someplace, a small city, not a major metropolitan area, a small city. Okay. And then scrape use the filters, find you a hundred people to text blast and text blast them today and then do it again tomorrow. That's it. And well, the day that's my thing. I want to work yeah. locally to get started before I reach out to, you know, too far away, I guess. Maybe that's 
Is that a problem? Do I not need to do that? No, I man. Gun for I, Atlanta? Uh, oh, no. I wouldn't go for Atlanta because it's so hot. You know, well, even in my area, it's hot. Yeah. I mean, there's they stuff selling around here. Yeah, where, 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 where are you? I'm in Warner Robins, middle, middle Georgia. I mean, this is a, <clears throat> a, a probably one of the fastest growing towns in middle Georgia, yeah. in Georgia. Yeah, period. yeah. Oh. Uh, that may not yeah. be a good area to to uh, to try to go exclusively in. Okay? okay, like I live in a hot area too. Uh -huh. So what what I end up doing is is I end up having marketing that I do. Uh, for deals here, but I end up going outside here in order to have enough volume to really afford the lifestyle that I like. Right. Okay. Yeah, because, can... because it's so hard to squeeze that much blood out of this turnip. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. At this time, at least. Okay. It wasn't that way, you know, a while back, but it's been, it's been like that for a while now. Yeah. Um, so I like to embrace both ideas, man, the local and the virtual doing them both. Yeah. yeah. Cause we can, I mean, I'm in Atlanta, but you know, I don't do a lot of make Atlanta. I do McDonough, Savannah, places like that. Warner Robins. That's the type of places I do. It. Yeah. Cool, man. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, I do the, try to do a little small town cause like I said, Atlanta's so many, you know, investors so i try to do a little smaller out of search town okay like that i get what you're saying ricky i think about i think what you're saying is is that if you're staying in your local market there it would be hard to get a hundred every day yes is it yeah I, yeah i agree 100 percent, man yeah so if you wanted to stay local only yeah you could use a scraper um, you should use the scraper to its fullest extent and build a, a realtor network. Mm -hmm. You should build a, a, an investor network, you know, cash buyers list and just go full spectrum wholesaler, dude, because you're going to be in that market to, to niche it down to one technique of lease options in one small or medium sized market is man. It, it's just the numbers don't work, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and in hot markets like mine, it, they don't work. Um, so I've got to, I've got to go virtual and local both, but locally, yeah, there's some things you can do to get more deals, man. Well, I guess I'd feel more comfortable going virtual like you do once I've done a couple right here in my own. Facility. I understand. I understand. Yeah. yeah. So you want to do a couple, uh, one or two just to kind of get the, make sure the wheels roll right and all that, yeah, you know, yeah. which I bought yeah. property before. I mean, I've been in the business for a while, but just picking up the phone, calling people, that's not me. That's something I got to master. I'm just not skilled at like you are. Okay. As as talking to folks. Well, you're, you're going to want to, you know, launch some marketing yep. then in, in your area. And it's not going to be just the, the automated REI because again, like we were just saying, it's not going to support, um, enough leads for you to have this kind of activity level um, in, in a small area. It's more of like, it's more like of a, it's more like a sawed off shotgun than it is like a sniper rifle. You know right. I mean? It's, it's just like, <laughs> and, and I like it for that reason. Cause I'm comfortable with the virtual idea, but um, locally I would grab me some bandit signs. Well, and, I've done, done that. They didn't, they didn't nab me for that probably been some eight years ago, but I got a phone call and, I won't do that. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I love bandit signs, man. I put them out on Friday after work. Yeah. That's a good idea. And then I pick them up Sunday afternoon. Right. So they only stay out on the weekends yep. and, and I lose a few every time I do it. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Um, but that way the municipalities are off for the weekend, you know, hopefully. And, right. uh, and, uh, you know, the guys, I guess, I don't know who drives around picking that shit up. Maybe parks, parks and rec guys or something. Code, I don't code know. Enforcement. Code enforcement here. Oh, okay. Well, I think they have the weekends off. Maybe. I don't, but, I don't, I don't know. Like for me, like for me, I know, <laughs> I know that he mentioned that, that, uh, that against the, the city called them. Uh, they called me as well. Right. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I actually spoke to one of the ladies, again, I told her, Hey, present me to your manager, how this works. And they, I got a number for the manager. You know what? And I explained to her again. I understand there's 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 quote enforcement, but I see other signs out there. Oh yes, they're not my signs. Right. And now again, if you look at the property, I give her a property. 
It's like we paid sixty nine thousand dollars of taxes that were back pay for one property that we got. Like that money you guys didn't have. That's what I did. And you guys are telling me I understand it. Again, it's a cat and mouse. I put them out. You guys get them out. But again, that's how I run my business. But then you guys don't cheer me on when I pay you sixty nine thousand dollars. Watch those seventy four thousand back pay taxes. Right. Perfect example. Or like that's money that you guys didn't have that I bought from one of those signs. Mm -hmm. So again, it's it's a cat and mouse. And again, the court enforcement is there. Again, I'm giving them business by they go out. They're in the pool and then they call me. The best way that I do it, again, if, if you're a little bit uh, sensitive on that, I pick them online when they call me up of one of those signs, and I say, hey, this uh, this is uh, Mr. X from uh, court enforcement. Oh, perfect. You know what? Hey, I'm just going to take the calls. Again, give me your batch number or give me your employee ID number, and I'll make sure I get forwarded to the next uh, to my manager. And again, I just block the call, block the number from the next one. I, I try not to be rude. I did that mistake once where, where I told him, well, you guys don't take off that sign from this. And I was like, ah, maybe I should just be more peaceful. And you know, okay, you know what? I'm not the one that does that. That's above me. I'm just the one that's picking up the call. Yep. So give me the number of who I, that my boss needs to call. And then I'll make sure that he gives that call. And then when we hang <laughs> up, I ask the number. Again, being peaceful. Again, that's less resistance, basically. I, I, if I'm in the mindset of trying to buy houses and I get mad and try to be confrontational with this guy because he's telling me about my signs, like, nah, I don't want to waste that energy. Right. Well, Again, the, like, like you said, bandit signs is the fastest way to get money in your pocket. That's the, again, yeah. anybody can tell you anything. That's the fastest way, less resistance. You don't have to know anything. Um, because they're calling you. They're calling you. And again, you might trip up six, seven times, but they're calling you. Well, that's what I like. I like, I like when they call me. I hate reaching out, picking up the phone, yeah. calling them. It's different. It's like pulling nails. Exactly. Yeah. I love the phrase, we take over house payments. Yep. I like that too. I love it. Yep. I need that's to get a, some signs for that then. That's an incredible lead. That's an incredible lead. Um, uh, you, uh, okay, but Ricky, there's other things you could do besides bandit signs. And, and in all honesty, Ace, aren't you kind of a hardcore bandit sign superhero? <laughs> yeah, I, I know you are going to post it, but yeah, I probably – around 200 a month goodness yeah yeah so around 50 a week yeah and so and i, and I do that myself but that's for me I, that's exciting right and that's my my yeah. on myself on the grindstone instead of being the manager and the boss i was manager when i was a lender out of that i was in the office now i want to be the one that goes out there and risk people honk at me and say well call the number i might answer the call <laughs> right. yeah yeah that's awesome um, yeah, that's pretty hardcore. You know how much work it is to put out 200 bandit signs and you're not just, you're just not putting them out like, like, uh, on H stands. You're, you're actually finding places to fasten them to. Is, is that correct? Yeah. At first I did the mistake of, of trying to, to put them on, uh, on the H sticks, but you know what? A it's again, the H stick itself, it's another dollar. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so and they're flimsy as hell and hard to carry around, man. Yeah. I, I got yeah, a heavier than, than the damn band time. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just played the game. I, I don't I used to put him real high. But like nah, this guy's I saw it. I catch I caught the guy once, the court enforcement guy, I recorded him. Um but he has like a broomstick like this long and he just goes like that and pulls it out. Like oh, that's why he can reach my science. So I just put him eye level. I know he's gonna take him off though. So. Right. Put on my level. It's, again, he, I put them on. He put. He takes them off. I put them on, and he takes them off again. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they're not threatening to find you or something. So that was my thing. Yeah, that's, find that's what they say. That's what they say. But again, I think the city has other issues to do. And then again, if you call my number, again, I have a PO box. Yeah, a PO box. And if I was you, I, I heard this from an attorney. Uh, that I that I'm gonna try to start doing for my for my uh, what's it called for my contract get a PO box from another state. Uh, okay. So when they someone's like say someone tries to you and they Google your name and they say oh listen there's a PO box from California I'm not gonna sue this guy he probably has no money and he's in California I'm not even gonna go through that hassle of trying to find that guy from California. Right. So it's just a barrier you know what 
get go get somebody that, that lives in another state, get a PO box from that state, and then put that as your address. Hmm. Again, and when and when they Google, like if you Google my number, it has a PO box number. And the reason why I don't change that number because it's SEO already. Like it, it like it's out there already. You put my number, it's going to pop up with a with buy a house. Right. So I don't change my number. So I just play the risk, and I, I understand. Like I say, I try not to be rude to the guy that's been doing their job. But you know what? I know you're just doing your job. Um, let me have your boss's number, and uh, I'll have my my boss call you guys. Yeah. And then I, we hang up, lock the number. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay. Again, they shouldn't complain because I'm giving them your business. And usually those guys they just drive around. Right. That's looking hilarious. for trouble. And if there's no bandit signs, where are they gonna look for? They're gonna get fired because there's no bandit signs out there. And then you have ten people hired in the city. <laughs> It is true, right? If there's the more bandit times out there, the more people that basically do, do justify their hours. And I think they take it by spells here. I mean, at certain times, there'd be a lot of bandit signs out. And I think that's when they yeah. really buckle down on that. Just put 50. Yeah. Again, for me, if I was you, I don't know how big your county is. Try 25 a week. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And again, spread, spread them out, spread them yeah. out, spread them out. And if, again, if, you're, if, if you want to be more cautious, Get a call row number, <laughs> which is, you can get 10 call row numbers for like 30 bucks. Okay. And buy 10 different band time. Yeah. One week you put one, they get no back down. One week you get the other ones, they go back down. By the time you know it, in 10 weeks, you're already back to the number one number. Right. They so don't okay. know who the, like, wait a second, this, this is 10 different numbers. So we don't know who, who this guy is. The best, the best part of that whole thing is when he was, when he said that he's the sole reason why some of these mother. <laughs> it's have, true. Have jobs. <laughs> yeah. The less, the more jobs out there, they justify to pay. Uh, that's a, like that's when I was awesome. a lender, if nobody's borrowing, then I, I can't justify my pay. But if people are borrowing, uh, hey, that's right. it's good. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> the circle of life. Yeah. That was awesome. But, but do those signs really worth the time and effort? Oh, yeah, they do. Trust me. Trust me, that's the best. That's the best. trust me. I I have been in, in rooms uh, with the top top guys in, in, the, in the business. The best advice somebody can give you: get a bandit sign. If you, need, if you don't have a bandit sign, get a damn cardboard. Put your name and number. We buy houses. Put them out there. Trust me, you get, you are gonna get a call. That's the fastest way to get into a conversation with someone that needs to sell a house. And the reason why they call the bandit sign. It's because they know the house is shitty. Why? Because usually if you want, trust me, there's more realtor signs out there than bandit signs. Yeah. Yeah. But they decided to call me. Right. There's a reason why they call me. Either they don't want to pay commission or the property is not going to pass inspection or they just want to move out fast. They don't want to wait. But there's a reason for that. Yes. I mean, here in the city, uh, man, that's a panhandle. Uh, like Justin said, if you put them in the weekdays, they'll take him out. So if you want to just put them on Friday and pick him up Sunday, that might work. But but that's a that's putting them up, picking up. That's a costly just to hire somebody. No. Like if I was like, yeah, Justin, just put them out. Again, for me, just again take the risk and just put them out. I I, I heard that just put them out and put pick them back up. But it was just for me, like you know what? Let me just risk it and I'll put them out. I'll put them out and I'll pick them up. Some do that. They they have that as a fee that they put them out on one day. And they pick them up. Yeah, I'll pay attention to those signs when I'm driving around. But I see them today, tomorrow they're not there. You know, I see them. Yeah, I see a different. It's a game. A different it's a game. One. They, they, they don't last a couple of days. I mean, they they yeah, really tough here on those things. It just don't get mad. Have you ever seen one of those signs and while you're driving and then called it yourself? Yep. It was like, uh-huh. hello. Oh, who is this? Oh, this is this is Ricky. Hey, Ricky. I'm Justin. Uh, you you a wholesaler? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool, man. I am too. Yeah. What kind of deals you working on? Uh, okay. Hey, you know I've got a great cash buyers list. Um, if you if you'd like to JV anytime, that'd be there. You cool go. Uh, maybe we could split the profits or something like that. Does that sound cool? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I've made a lot of money off them signs. <laughs> Yep, That's true. Have. Gotta call them signs. It's a two-way street with them signs. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, don't you want to know who's working in your market? 
Don't you? Well, I've, you I've called the signs and you wouldn't even get an answer. I mean, I leave a message. Yeah. Maybe it's somebody new or scared down to the phone or something. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll always leave a good message, though, because, see, I want them to call back. Right. Yeah. So if it's a we buy houses, uh, you know, call because we buy houses, you know, I'll I'll call like I'm a seller. I'll be like, yeah, I've got a house that I I definitely want to sell. Um, you call call me, Justin. OK, yeah. cool. I just, you know, I trick them into calling me back, man. Right. Because wholesalers are notoriously lazy. Yeah. Like they do not return calls. I've had them not even return that call. And I'm like, nothing about that call said Said anything other than I'm a desperate, motivated homeowner willing to do anything up to, and maybe even including whatever (laughs) to get rid of this house. (laughs) And I didn't even get a call back then. Yeah. Thank you. You know, that's okay. I just don't know why they waste their time putting out signs yeah why put out signs to not return the calls man how many people are guilty of that getting leads and then not calling them (laughs) that's why i gotta be i'm gonna send you a whole box of nine volt batteries ace (laughs) go ahead go for it my brother and talking about the va uh just again just Having somebody that's mining your back in your 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 back office, um, I got three deals reactivated just because she texted them from another number. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're good deals. They're they're good deals again. And and the way that she she sends the text is like, hey, this is uh, so and so. Um, I am so so secretary uh, again. He said that you might have spoken to you about a about a house. I don't know if you guys can have it here on this address. Uh, I just need to update the file. Should we close this? Did you sell it? Did you keep it? Again, I just need an update. Please reply. Thank you. And just like that, like, wait a second. That kind of validates, wait a second, this guy has a secretary. That means, again, I should call him. So it works. Again, and I'm paying this lady uh, a good salary for for that. And just that, just like, again, those two, three deals, like you said, Justin, like on a one-on-one, that's going to pay for for probably like six years worth of her salary. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's definitely worth it in the long run, yeah. but there is some yeah. work to it. We were talking a little bit about VAs last night and, and the, the one plus four equals five versus the one plus one plus one plus one plus one. And uh, there you go. that's kind of how, you know, it's kind of yeah. how you have to do it. And, and you've been doing that going through that a little bit lately. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it's, it's work. It's work. Yeah, it's, it's work. Trust me. Just it, it was again. It's a learning curve at, one, at first, but then just you know what? Do this. Follow up. Do this. Do this. And and yeah, trust me. She she's worth she's worth what I what what I've hired. What it really showed me was the inadequacies in my own machine, in my own understanding too of the machine of my own machine, um, because you really have to break it down into. Uh, you know, little one plus one plus one plus one plus one stuff. And so if you, if you can't break this down and explain it to somebody else and teach them how to do it, do you really know it yourself? Exactly. You, know what I'm, you know what I mean? And, and it started exposing some areas in my business guys. This is, <clears throat> this is like next level kind of talk here. I think because when you first get started, you're just trying to grasp it all, but, but really you need to, to get more detail oriented, break this stuff down into little chunks and understand the little pieces and the mechanics of how all of it works at at, so, so well that you could teach a virtual assistant to do it. And then you don't have to, uh, uh, you know, then you don't have to do it yourself. You have it outsourced. This is Q and a guys. Um, anybody, anybody else got a question or, uh, yeah, I'm going to ask one. Uh, yeah. I was having the question for you tonight anyway, about the VAs. Um, when you get those FISBOs, you know, the text back. So when you have the girl qualifying the leads, actually she have to call the yeses and the maybes to qualify them instead of you calling them. That's how you're using her. Over yes. Them. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. It is a him in my case. Uh, but, um, 
yeah and and that just happened by accident i didn't plan that okay um uh, <laughs> but uh this is my challenge i mean i have like from last week i have like 30 yeses i call them and hesitate to call the next one if i get a bad uh, response yeah. and then then i'll leave like 10 15 not called you know so that's yeah. been a challenge what you need is a cute little Filipina girl that can get on the phone and talk excellent Americanized English and just really sweetheart some of these grumpy people that are on the phone. You know, that's really exactly what I would do if I didn't have somebody working already. If I was looking for somebody, that's exactly the first place I would go. I would find me a Filipina phone worker that knows how to sound sweet as sweet as sugar on the phone and so do, my, do my pre-qualification calls for me. I mean, the kind of voice that makes you just want to like, see, I'm, I'm going to be picky if I do it again, because, you know, some of you guys are just like, Oh, well, he talks good English. You know, I, I think, and actually, no, they don't talk really all that good English, but, yeah, I'm 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 hunting for somebody who's got who's got a voice that that'll make butter melt. You know what I mean? Just just. I mean, I have know. I have one now, but she only texting it. Really, she haven't, but she does speak. Really, I mean, good English, not really perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah. But I was gonna ask you check with you today and see um, what's the best use of her as far as she's need to be calling all these yeses and maybes and what address and all this. Yeah, uh, there's a pre-qualification script. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm That's, just, I'm just, I'm just kind of have the little hurdle with the calls to call them back, and sometimes it's just mood things more than anything, really. I mean, not to call them back, you know. So. And I've been there, just like, like you say, in there. I mean, you, you sit there and think about it so much that you pretty much just talk yourself out of calling them back or whatever. I'm guessing. So, yeah, yeah, you, I mean, I, so I, I, you guys I, I, are the guys I, I, I was talking about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what's your thoughts on postcards in your local market? I mean, is that worthy? Um, postcards, yeah. I mean, it, they they work, but um, it's kind of pricey. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've got I've got deals that way. I'm just wondering because I'm thinking yeah. I'm thinking to ramp it up here. Yeah, yeah Ricky. Ricky, you said that you were wanting to go like local. I wouldn't completely discount like driving for dollars, especially if you have a program like PropStream where you can stack yep. you know, some different scenarios. And I mean, you know, you're, you're going to find properties that aren't being sold to every other wholesaler in the area. And uh, that's a good way to stick it local. And, you know, if you're using something like a dill machine or, you know, something along that lines, you could always just pop them in a postcard as well. Yeah, well, I got PropStream, so I've got, I've got the, the means to do it. I just got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah man yeah yeah if you pull up some vacants pre foreclosures you know owner of 10 plus years yeah i mean you're, you're gonna find some deals in your local area that not okay. everybody's hitting up man that's for sure okay so i wouldn't discount that at all may i ask you how you apply the prop stream uh, lists to the deal machine i never use the deal machine by the way well for instance if you're let's say you want to target locally or or not let's just talk about locally you can pull up your local area and then you can start using the filters to find some distress, um, whether it's, <clears throat> uh, you know, pre foreclosures, vacant properties, some, you know, just uh, tired landlords that have owned the properties for 10, 15 years. I mean, you can really, you know, like, like Alicia said, uh, Aisha said, you could put in liens. There's, there's a lot of different filters and you can stack those filters and, you're basically just creating your own driving for dollars list. Instead of just randomly hitting all the neighborhoods, you're actually mapping out properties that, that fit a stacked criteria that you found on prop stream. So you're using it to find local properties with multiple levels of distress. And now you're driving with a purpose and you can take that to any different area that you want to hit. But if you just start locally, that's one way where you could really dig in, and not all those properties are going to be sold, you know, on all these other list platforms that people are buying lists from. And that's just right. one way of doing it. There's a lot of different avenues, but but that is one where we could hit it locally, multiple levels of distress from stacking it using PropStream. Okay, cool. 
Yeah, great, uh, great tips, man. You're right. Uh, Prop Stream is awesome for that. Awesome. I love these club sessions, man. I never know where they're going to go. I, <laughs> it's always like this. Ryan, also, yes, sir. Pre qualification calls, man. If you got the script, just teach the VA to make those calls for you. Then that whittles the 30 yeses and maybes down to three, four, five for you to talk to. Okay, um... That's it. And then she can even set an appointment for you to have a time where you're going to speak with them. So you know, hey, I just have to make the call. And when the call's over, I get to go back to watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> okay. Just on average, like uh, if she calls Stella going through the qualification, on average, how many she can call an hour, maybe like just, just an, an average? Oh, pre qualification call? She should be able to do 15 to 20 in an hour. Yeah. Man, she only texts in about 20 an hour, but she go back and forth with the text, you know, like, I mean, it's not like a machine text and you can tell that's yeah. the person on the other line. Yeah. Text, like, you know. Yeah. She takes about 20 on average an hour. 20, 20 on average. She might be rushing through. Um, I, I think she might need to slow down a little bit. You might listen to her. And if she's, you say she's talking to people and then, no, she's just texting. She not talking. Oh, oh, okay. So she's texting twenty in an hour. Well, holy shit! You, you but, could, but back and forth. You know, they'll answer like, "Who's this?" You say, "Hey, that's my." Oh, wife. okay, okay. Because just to make it sound like it's a real person on the other line, it's not a machine texting. You. Got you, got you. Okay, yeah. I mean, I watch all the texts through the Vumber. You know, she texts through Vumber here. So. Right. That's a that's a great tool. Somebody was asking me. Uh, Somebody was asking me in the chat, what's some, what's some tools that I use? Vumber is one of them. Um, I'm trying to scroll up. There's been so many. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica wanted to know what do I use for automation besides REI, uh, automated REI and, or text magic. Okay. Um, I, I love prop stream. Prop stream is my fave actually. If, if automated REI did not exist, I would do more with PropStream than I do. But automated REI is a cheap way for me to do scraping, and I like that idea. And it's also cheap for skip trace and text blast and all that. So um, now they got that deal submission thing where you can let them be your dispo side. I don't know. We'll have to test that out, guys, and uh, submit some deals in there. But um, automated wise, I, I, I like that. I like Vumber. That's my phone service for my VAs. Okay, I also use Skype actually, and it's like an upgraded version of Skype where you get a, a local number um, and you can do calls like they can use it uh, where they're where they're at. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I, I like Get Response. Get Response is great for automating a lot of my business as well. It does a number of different things. Everything from uh, email marketing to Facebook ads, you know, to, um, let's see what else we, well, we use it, well, I said email marketing, because so we use that in several different ways. Um, but uh, that's probably the most prevalent marketing tool we use. Um, get response for is the the email marketing but it also allows us to have landing pages too so we create a lot of landing pages i have hundreds of them probably <laughs> and uh you know yeah you do it's it's uh it's a lot <laughs> i mean i have a lot and and you ask me hey do you have a landing page for cash buyers uh in such and such a place probably <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what get response allows me to do. And it's all one money. So I think I pay like 60 bucks a month and I can have as many landing pages as I want. So kind of a neat deal. Um, I hope that, I hope, I hope that was helpful. Anybody else got any, uh, any I was, questions? I was going to ask Crick if, uh, can he do us a favor? Maybe can, uh, Write those uh, filters for the prop stream for the stack listing. 
Sure. What was the what, what's the question? Um, if you can maybe kind of put a, like a couple suggestion how you stack the filters for the for the uh, local area. Uh, yeah. Um, like let's say you typed in your whatever your city is. Let's say it's you know like Atlanta, Georgia, or Pensacola. Or, I'm at Pensacola, Florida. Sure. Yeah. That you can you can just start with that and kind of just see how many. Uh, what pulls up, right? Just uh, in prop stream, type in just your city and state. And then really kind of depends on what you want to do. If you want to, first of all, look to see if there's any pre-foreclosures, you could do that. Maybe you just want to look at people that, uh, maybe just want to click on the vacants tab, you know, and just start off with vacants. And then from there, you can really start narrowing it down. You can just pop in, just, you want to look at vacants that are, you know, non-owner occupied or uh, three bedroom, a thousand square foot, any of them have liens. Um, you can really just narrow it down to as large or as small as a list as you want. But really from there, you can kind of filter out um, as many different distress factors if you want. If you just want pre-foreclosures that are three bedroom with just a notice of default, you know, that'd give you like a count. Um, maybe you want to stay away from pre-foreclosures and you just want to go with high equity that's non-owner occupied. Um, it really depends on what size of list you want to get because it's going to, the more filters you add is obviously going to narrow it down tighter. Um, but, you know, the, some areas, the initial like just vacants may be more than enough, right? So you just want to add some other distress factors to it so you don't have, you know, 15,000. Um, so it really just depends on what type of number you want to deal with and and really what type of distress factors you want to work with because you can take it so many different directions. I mean, are, are you just wanting distressed or, you know, do you like the idea of high equity with, you know, that they've owned the property that are non owner occupied and have had it for 15 years. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of different types of potential sellers there, either distressed or just tired, you know what I mean? And you can really tailor it. I'm yeah. not sure if that helps a lot. I'm not really painting a direct picture, but, there's really a lot of different directions you can go. Yeah, that's fine. I understand. I mean, there's a lot of filters in the course anyway, but my point was you really need the reason when somebody, you know, respond or when you call somebody, there's got to be a reason why maybe they want to sell, you know? Yeah. It depends on your first approach, I guess. I mean, one of them could just be, Hey, uh, uh, if you're going to code call or like you said, you're, you have a person texting, you know, your, your initial text could be, Hey, we're looking at properties in the area. Just wanted to reach out to see if you ever thought about selling it, you know, or just something very basic. Um, obviously, if it's a pre foreclosure, that message may be a little bit different. Um, you know, tired landlords, you could talk to a little bit differently than somebody that may be majorly distressed. Maybe they're not distressed at all. So you could just tailor your initial approach really kind of based off of what filters you're using. Like sometimes my message is just straight up and simple, like, Hey, I'm interested in buying a couple of houses in the area. Have you ever considered us selling your property on Jones street? You know, it is very short to the point, kind of a yes or no type of thing. And, you know, sometimes they respond, sometimes they don't. Justin, anything you want to add to that? I keep it kind of simple really when it comes to, you know, uh, the initial text and things. Um, no, I don't have uh, a lot to add to that. That was a great response. And, and it really boils down to, in my opinion, just pulling the trigger on a bunch of different stuff in prop stream, you know, um, just pulling a lot of different variations of filters that you've set and seeing what you come up with and, and testing it out because every market's going to be different. Would you concur with that, Rick, or am I wrong? No, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I pulled up a list of like this past weekend. Um, I haven't drove in, in a little bit. I pulled up a list just in my local area. I pulled up just pre foreclosures. I only wanted notice of defaults. So at least they were like right around the 90 day mark of being late. I only wanted three bedroom. I only wanted a thousand square foot. That narrowed my list down to like seven properties. So I just drove them. I took a picture with Dill Machine. And I immediately just started mailers. So yeah. they're going to get a postcard. I'm going to skip. I'm going to have a VA skip trace it. And then I'll shoot them a text. You know, my text will be like, hey, I sent you a postcard. You may not have got it yet. I was driving around this past weekend, saw your property. 
um, want to talk to you about it. You know, so, so it's really kind of, you can really tailor it to even something small. You just want to go out and hit up 10 properties. You can really, you know, pull something like that together. And just, even if you're just doing 10, you can even take it back and just reverse kind of, uh, kind of do a little reverse engineering and look them up on Facebook and send them an instant message. Hey, I live here yeah. in Santa Clarita, you know, or whatever. I mean, you can really take it a lot of different ways, but I, I like texting it like myself. I don't really do a lot of postcards, but like I've started locally again with sending out things through Deal Machine just because I drove it myself and, uh, you know, they're local and easy communication. I'm pretty stoked about this PropStream app coming out here. What is it, this week, next week, something like that? Yeah, I'm that. curious about that. Where curious is about it? how that's going to... Rolling. It has it has the deal machine type scenario built into it, and that might be really cool because I really love PropStream. It's great. Um, I, I don't, I can't think of a more powerful platform for for what what we want to do than that. Um, maybe there is. I don't know of it. Um, you know, if you know of one, you know, let me know, and I'll I'll take a looky loo at it, but. PropStream, they, they kind of won my heart a little bit because I've never, once I understood it, okay, once I understood it, once I got it, <laughs> and, and it took a bit, um, and it took some work to get it, but once I got it, it's like, man, nothing else compares because I can do things with that machine that nobody else probably will ever be able to do calling up and buying something from list source or something like that. Crazy. So that's the power of it, but, but it's a learning curve to it too. And that's kind of, that's kind of this crappy part, but that's life, right? <laughs> but deal machines. Great. Why is deal machine? Great. Uh, you know, those type things driving for dollars. Anybody got a, uh, got an answer for that? Why is that type of list? Great. Oh, you. Well, I know why, but I'll, I'll let everybody else jump in. Because you look at distress, maybe physical distress, but but I think in the same time, if somebody mailing, they kind of fall on some kind of list, like maybe absentee or uh, you know uh, equity or whatever you know. So they're probably still getting list. I mean, uh, postcard from these investors is still. I mean, even even their house list still looks distressed. Well, what happens is. With the Deal Machine app, you, uh, which PropStream's coming out with this also this month. But when when you drive up to their house, you you hold your phone up to it and you snap a picture. That picture goes on the postcard, and it says something like, you know, you can modify it, but it says something like, "Hey, is this your house?" Right in big capital, huge letters, and it's like, "Hey, is this your house?" With the picture you took. So it's eye catching. Okay. And then, you know, but if, if I'm just blanket postcarding, I miss out on some of that. Right. Cause I just bought a postcard. That's going to go out to the same 3000, all the same postcards going out to 3000, but on a deal machine type scenario, it's real, real, it's real personal, but also <clears throat> that list is just yours. Nobody else buys that list, right? You didn't buy that list from anybody. You've built your own custom wholesaler list. If you were, if you really want to be serious about this in a local, local market, you really ought to be doing probably a number of gigs. One is, is, is the bandit signs. You know, if, if you can get away with it and, and do the work on the weekends or have somebody do it. But, but then also, um, I, I would I would definitely employ some advertising in like the, the thrifty nickel or the American classifieds or the local newspaper. OK, I would niche market down into my my local area on Facebook. So not paying to go Facebook nationwide, just in my local market. And, uh, you, you know, I would pull some very specific lists like like these uh, expireds and failed listings. I would build a cash buyers list so that if I get ugly houses, I could totally just sell those off to. 
And then I would, I would either personally or I would have somebody drive for dollars <clears throat> and I'd want a picture of every distress looking property in my entire area. Eventually it's going to take some time to get there, but we'll get there. And I want to be hitting every last one of them with a postcard, a customized postcard with a picture of their freaking house on it. And it says, is this your house? <laughs> right. If I got a postcard that said, is this your house? And it had a picture of my house on it. Uh, you better believe I'm reading it. I'm like, what the hell is this about? Somebody taking pictures. Oh, okay. This guy wants to buy my house. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. It's almost controversial. Yeah. You know? So that's kind of a marketing strategy for a local market guys, but um, those lists are kick ass. When you got to, when you, when you're going to develop a, a local market, you've got to develop some, some lists of your own. Right. And, and you've got to buy some lists. Prop stream is a great way to do that without paying extra money, but sorry, I'm rambling. What's, what's, <laughs> what, what's more I can add to that. If anything, man, and I hope I answered your question hey guys i just oh, want to put oh. out there too um if if any of y'all have prop stream and, and need some help like running filters or running comps and things like that just reach out to me in the facebook group and i have no problem like doing a share screen with you and, and helping you out so that's that's all Boom. good rick's rick's better at prop stream than me yeah yeah and I love prop stream. It's great. I've I've got some ninja techniques, I think, but I've I've seen Rick in action. And he's even better. That was good. Thank <laughs> That's you. Funny. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anybody got any, another question? Uh, we can we can do one more. I think maybe before we wrap up today. Man, what a great group. Love you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, hope you get hope you get stuff out of this and uh you know if 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 not bring your questions man and we'll we'll work with you and your your questions uh lots of good chat here too anybody got a question hey justin yeah what's up what's hey, up man How you doing? doing good man good to see you all hey, right man. same yeah i joined a group as well yeah i know man i know i saw you in there yeah welcome nate you go by nate yeah, that's fine. Believe it or not, I actually got a brother named Nate, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, we can call you. We can call you Nathaniel if you want, though, or what? It, nah, Nate is fine. I, I <laughs> call so many things. Nate, dog, all kind of stuff, man. Okay. All right. Mr. Uh, Wilson. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Wilson. I like that. Well, yeah. Well, what I was uh, what I was facing, I have a, I have a really good lead. But the problem is, is that the uh, person is listed with a realtor. So I just wanted to know how how you usually go about that. Do you usually try to work with the realtor, or just kind of wait till this contract actually expires? Because the lady is super motivated; she wants to move back to Florida. How long has it been on the market, man? Uh, One hundred and sixteen days. Oh, okay, so quite a little while. Yep. She need if she wants to do the deal. See, the agreement that she has with the realtor that brings the realtor into the scenario is hers, okay? That's her realtor. That's her agreement, her responsibility. So she can either, one, square up with the realtor in some way or another, money-wise, on the deal, or she might be able to call the realtor, throw a fit, and say, listen, it's been on the market this long. You ain't done this and done that. I want you to release me from my exclusive listing agreement right now. I'm going to do something totally different. Don't ever call me again. Okay, so you might be able to get away with that and get out of it. Um, but ultimately, there's nothing you personally can do. You can only advise the homeowner, hey, if you want to do this deal with me, and here's how I say it, Mr. Homeowner, now that we've come to a deal um, – it sounds like you 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 would want to do this with me, um, but you have a realtor involved. This that property is listed. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, I've got it listed. It's been listed for 181 days, uh, or, or whatever it was you said, man. Uh, yeah, uh, it's been listed that long. Okay. Well, Mr. Realtor, what were your? Pl I mean, Mr. Homeowner, what were your plans on handling the realtor in this scenario? Were you going to? include him and pay him in the deal or were you going to get out of that listing 
because something will need to happen and it will have to be you that that does that what was your plan sir okay that's what i asked the homeowner that's about the only thing you can do because that's their problem right right so yeah if you call a realtor though okay if you're calling leads and it is a realtor Okay, then you say simply in a professional way without going into some big ass sales pitch, you say, hey, I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking to get an investment property. And so I was calling on this one. Would your client consider a lease for 18 to 24 months before we pay full price? No, they wouldn't. Okay, have a great day. Or I've had them say, yes, yes, they would. The property has been on the market for 180 days already. And I really, really know they're, they're ready to do something. They need to they're probably rent the house out if I can't sell it. And, and my listing agreement is almost up. I've had them say that. Okay. You don't know. Don't be prejudiced, right? Don't prejudge. Um, you know, and say, hey, you know, well, this is a realtor, you know, it's, you don't know that realtor might be scrambling. I've had realtor recently tell me this is the second time I've had this house listed. And this time it's been listed for five months. Sure. Um, do you think she was interested in pitching that deal? Oh yeah. And she had already even asked them if they would consider something like this. And before I even called. So, you know, I don't know. Go figure. Some money is better than no money in her mind, the realtor's mind, right? Some money sometime is better than no money ever. <laughs> and, you know, I got the deal. So don't, don't judge a book by its cover. I hope that helps, man. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What's up, Victor? On paying the realtor, do you have a, um, you know, a, a way that you pay consistently? You have a percentage that you offer on a consistent basis or is yes. this kind of, you know, pay as you go type thing? Yes, I do. I have a system, a method, uh, a mindset about it. And I'll use guts. I'll say, uh, Mr. Realtor, I'm glad your client it will consider the lease with the option to purchase. Um at, at full asking price. Um, I got one more question, Mr. Realtor. How do we, how do we get you paid in this? How were you wanting to be paid? You know why I asked that? Because he's going to tell me how to close him and close this fucking deal. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's what that question solicits. How would you, how were you wanting to be paid? I have also had them come back to me and say, Oh, I'll get paid my commission when, when they buy at the end of 24 months. That's the best answer. Ding, 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 ding. We got a winner here, Johnny. Right? Well, I've also had them say, well, I, I'm going to need 3%. Okay. Then my response is, well, how about this, Mr. Uh, Realtor? I'm not going to be able to do the 3%, but what we could do is we could do 1% now and 2% when we buy. Okay. A lot of times they're reasonable because see, they're motivated because they recognize the motivation of the homeowner too. So uh, I, I really almost never get into a scenario where they, where they will not accept that. 1% up front, 2% on the back end. But I hope that answers your question. I don't start there. I start with how did you, you know, how, how would you like to be paid? Because a lot of times they'll come back with, I'll, I'll just get paid when they buy. Man, that's the best. Yeah. <sighs> then I don't have to share the option fee. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. You are welcome. <laughs> hey, anybody got a question? Anybody? All right. Yes, I do. I have a question. Arrow. Yeah. Okay. What's up? Look, I'm going crazy over here because I swear to God, man, I just want to get my stupid video off of this thing and just have just my face. I have a profile face. How can I get my damn video over this thing? It's driving me nuts. 
Uh, how do you get the video turned on? Get it off. I mean, I got a profile picture. Here. I just want my picture alone without my damn video. It's, it's oh, me nuts here. oh, you gotta you gotta log in to to Zoom when you're not on a meeting, and then I yes. think don't you have to to upload a profile picture? I already got that. See, I got the profile picture there, and I put that in there already. But I keep having my stupid face here, and I don't have the proper lighting, and I don't want that thing there. I just want just the picture. <laughs> Man, I don't. I don't know. The lighting is terrible, man. So I don't want that stupid uh, picture video. I just want my yeah. picture. You just want. Oh, you want to put a good looking picture up there, so Absolutely. we can we can all see how pretty you are and everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfair, man. See, we you got to deal with the real deal right here. This is the real thing. No makeup. No, no I hair. Know, you got good lighting. Look at your lighting. I mean, for some reason, I look like I'm in a dungeon. Man, we're gonna be I, on the beat like Vic. <laughs> I think this is a seventeen dollar lamp from Target. I think, man. For real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm not an expensive guy. Uh, I no, that's good. Well, um, if anybody's got tips on how to get Errol a uh, a profile picture on there, holler at him. I, I, I'm not sure. Appreciate I can't it. honestly. I can't remember, man. I've changed mine two or three times now, but I don't remember exactly how I did it. <laughs> okay. Um, I understand. Anybody else got a got a question? I appreciate everybody's participation here today. Great group, great group. Tomorrow we're role playing, guys. I'll be here, and we'll we'll be role playing again, uh, and doing uh, just doing it, doing it, doing it. Um, what I, I like to practice at least a couple, two or three times a week, man, because you know you got to stay sharp. Um, same bat channel, same bat time. It'd be noon central time, one o'clock Eastern time. Right. It'll be 10 o'clock over there on the West coast tomorrow. Love you guys. Love you guys. Any, any last questions? What are you going to do today? You tell me what happens next. What happens now? <laughs> oh, somebody lead Jen yeah. or, or yeah. phone or phone calls. Which one? Both. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thank you. Hi. Bye, buddy. Bye bye, Debbie. Hey, everyone.